Okay. Okay. Let's do this. So, so all right. Because we have to talk about Jesus came with a new covenant. So the ending of the old covenant was well, the I'm, beginning I'm of the new covenant. I'm waiting for your explanation, mate. Yeah. So, so I'm giving it people to explain it. So you're taking uh, your time on fulfilling it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does fulfilling mean? I always thought fulfilling means like, say, like, you pray. Yeah. You know, you follow, so I fulfill you know, my duties as a Muslim by, by following laws. the law of God. Yeah, you fulfill a law by following A Hindu would do the, stay the same thing, we'll have the same concept for them. Buddhist, I don't know, I've never read it. Okay, so I'm going to jump a few, uh, a few passages, but I'm going to start in the Old Testament when it talks about the coming of the new covenant. So it says, the Lord will pour out his spirit. And it says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and the female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit. So this verse starts talking about the new covenant that Christ is going no, to bring. Let's, let's just read the verse. Right. It doesn't mention the new covenant. We weren't allowed to interpret it fulfilling. We okay, can't okay, okay. Right. carry on, carry on. It's your interpretation, okay. floor is yours. New actually, Paul's I know. Let, let's actually, I've even got, let me just go to Malachi 3.1. All right. Because it says, in Malachi 3.1, this is the Old Testament, right? It says, behold, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming. So then we have to establish what is the covenant because the old covenant will end and the new covenant will start. Right? No, that's your interpretation. What it says is I'm going to one will pave the law for the other. I'm so one to, will be teaching the law and commandments, let, the I, other one will come and teach the law and the commandments. That's my because I said to you the scripture. Very easy to refute. Scripture interprets scripture. Very, very scripture. You, when I asked you to bring me verses, you didn't. You, you so I'm going to give you minutes, verses. I can give would you. it be all right if you were I can to give you verses. Just, just talk about that Wait, No, no, no. no. Okay. Uh, let I me speak with you. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, let but like, he yes, doesn't yes, know the yes. verses, so you might know yeah, it. Yeah, the thing is, he's going to bring a different argument. You took 25 minutes to bring the words. If he does, I swear I'll stop him myself. All right, go on. Bring your point. I'll stop him myself. Oh, will you now? Bring your point. That's awfully kind of you. And how will you be doing? Yeah. No, doesn't show up. I can't say that. Comes up after a few months. And then says, yeah. can I say, can I present yeah, a case? Oh, where, yeah, on, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what's your name, young man? <laughs> You're from Albania, aren't you? Originally. Uh, yeah. Well, possibly. Welcome to England. Thank you. Welcome to England. I hope you enjoy the weather. Sorry, we know each other. I know. Um, <laughs> right. Um, the case is that Jesus commanded all people, after the so-called new covenant, to obey the Jewish law. That's my argument. This is based on good scholarship, that, not just on... Right. Let me make his good. point. Are you, are you, that's my point. It's based on Matthew's Gospel. Each Gospel is different. It teaches different things about the law, different things about Jesus. So my first piece of evidence, the very end of Matthew's Gospel, uh, and I don't believe this is history, but we'll go with the text as it, as it says. Jesus appears to his disciples and uh, he says, Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, if we don't get beaten up first. Um, so there's been a lot of um, aggro here today. Uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This is a key verse. So the disciples are going to all the nations and teach them to obey all the commandments, all that I have obeyed, all that I have commanded them, commanded you. So what are these commandments? We ask that Jesus has told his disciples to tell all the nations. Let me give you two examples of these commandments, both of, both of which uphold the Jewish law in the kingdom of God. Remember, Jesus didn't go around preaching a new covenant. He went around Judea preaching the kingdom of God. So when you enter into the kingdom of God as a disciple of Jesus, do you obey the law or not? The Jewish law. Let's see what Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 17. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. Do not think I've come to abolish the law, hmm. all the prophets, for I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, one not stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until it all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, like say the food laws, and teaches others to do the same, will be called the very least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever teaches the commandments and will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that's my first piece of evidence, that in the kingdom of God, 
as a disciple of Jesus, you're expected to obey, obey the 613 commandments of the law. Let's look at the very end of the ministry of Jesus. Maybe he changed his mind. So before, maybe, before you maybe. Go no, let me, fin let me finish. Let me finish. Let, I want you to explain let me finish. to everyone because no, I, 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 have, him the I same have finished. Question. I haven't finished. When it says until I all finished. is accomplished, what I does that mean? I haven't finished. So let me. Let me That's your question. So when you well, read it, I want to answer kind of that. Now let me finish. At the end of Jesus' ministry, and remember the point here. At the end of Matthew 28, Jesus tells his disciples to go into all the nations and baptize them and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So what has Jesus commanded during his ministry? This is after the new so-called new covenant that you allege. What has he told them to do in the new covenant in the kingdom of God? What are the commandments? This is what we're looking at. So I've given you Matthew 5, very detailed. You obey even the smallest aspects of the law you ought to obey. Wait a second. Right? Oh, Secondly, why don't you talking about the Bible when you wouldn't talk about the Quran? <laughs> What, is, what, what is going on here today? Why can't, the Quran. why can't I finish? Because there's zero about the Quran. Because he doesn't speak about the Bible. The Bible. I know. Okay. Just, let me finish. He's, he's a Muslim. That's why what his point is I know, I know. he doesn't support. But even if he's completely wrong, that doesn't yes. support your argument. Okay. Okay. Even if I know nothing about the Quran. Because he makes logical fallacies. We're not talking about the Quran. We're talking about it's the Jesus. Pointed out. So remember, we're saying here, Jesus, uh, after the uh, resurrection, Jesus tells his disciples so to go into yeah. all, of, all your world, to the Gentiles and the Jews, and teach him to obey everything that I've commanded you. So what do we know is commanded? By looking at the very gospel where Jesus taught that. I've given you the evidence of Matthew 5. Now let's look at the end of his ministry when he's teaching people and see what he says here about the law. He says in Matthew 23, then Jesus says to the crowds and to his disciples, everyone in other words, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Moses' seat being, these are teachers of the law, Moses' seat. Therefore, Jesus says, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. The hypocrites. But nevertheless, they obey the Jewish, you know, follow their teaching, if not their practice. So these are the commandments that the disciples are to go into the nations to tell people to obey. And then, uh, my last piece of evidence, in the same chapter, 23, 23, slightly more complicated, but pay attention, listen to it, he really gets the nuance here. Woe to you, says Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others without neglecting the others. In other words, you obey the law as interpreted by Jesus, so with a great emphasis on justice, mercy and faith, but you are not to neglect the smaller aspects of the law. So these are the commandments that Jesus tells his disciples after the resurrection, after the so-called new covenant. They are to, to, to tell everyone to obey, just as I have commanded you. Now. Before my, my friend comes in here and says, oh, but look at it in John and look at it in Mark and look at it in Luke. I'm not talking about I these other Gospels. The, the other does, Gospels teach something different. Uh, he wants the question yes. right. Okay, no, now mean, fulfilled. Okay. He means fulfilled. Yeah. But do you know, um, it's on record because I've been filmed having other debates about this same stuff. So I've asked Christian after Christian what they think it means. You're the one who's I don't, scripture. I don't know what it means. Okay. I don't so want therefore, if he doesn't it, know what it means, he has no criteria to say that Jesus... But let, but let me finish. It's but let me finish. Forever. Let me, let me, let me because answer. how can you say it means I do Jesus did not abolish the law? Well, you don't even let know what it Let me finish. Let me finish and then you can speak. But I do He's know this. A, I do know this. Oh, some Christians I, I, don't know. No, it's not anything. a fallacy. It's a statement of fact. If some Christians don't know, it doesn't mean anything. Look, Because there are Christians that do know. Right, well, I mean, it's just so, see. All right. What it cannot mean, because right. we, can certainly, we can certainly discount certain logical possibilities. Okay, go what on. it cannot mean is that fulfillment means abolition of the law. How do we know that? Because in the very same paragraph, Jesus says, therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments of the law. Say, for example, uh, the food laws. Do you eat pork? I ask Christians all the time, do you eat pork? Do you know what they say to me? Yes. But this is the least of the commandments of the law. Whoever says, whoever breaks them and teaches others to do the same, like Paul did, will be called the very least in the kingdom of heaven. They are the lowest people in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them, so you're all Muslim, so do you eat pork? Right. Well, why is that? Because God prohibits it. So isn't it interesting? I find over and over again, Muslims actually obey Jesus' teaching no, and they Christians don't. don't obey Jesus', Jesus teaching. Jesus says, do not be like the heathens and make repetitive prayers in vain. As a Muslim, when you pray five times a day, you repeat Allah's name how many times? So therefore, 
you do not listen to the words of Jesus because he's saying you pray like heathens. No. He says do not engage in repetitive prayers. Heathens. That's what he said they follow what Jesus says. But Jesus says do not repeat. Do you know how I can refute that? It doesn't matter. They do not follow Christ. I can refute that. Jesus says do not follow. It's easy to refute that. Jesus says. Jesus says. He's saying I follow Christ. I'm saying in that time they followed. Do you eat pork? Jesus said do not repeat. Do you eat pork? Again, do you eat pork? Yes, I do. See, this man eats pork, even though Jesus tells him in the Torah not to eat pork. So who is following? And are you a Muslim? So you're not. I know you're not. Are you a Muslim? What they would do? Have you? I didn't know you become Muslim. Are you a Muslim? Of course you're a Muslim. Jesus said, "Do not engage in vain repetition." Why don't you eat pork? Criticize the Pharisees because God said no. So if you're saying you're praying, are not obeying even Jesus Messiah. Why is it then you repeat Allah's name? Why is it 99 times or? Hundred times or whatever it is every day. Let me answer that. Let me answer that. Vain repetition. No, it's not. Exactly what Christ vain spoke. Of. What is vain repetition? Let me explain. Let me explain. Repeating something again and Christ, again Christ and again and again. No, it's not. It's vain repetition. Yes. Which means vain repetition. Results. When Muslims and the, the first uh, hadith in Sahih Bukhari yes. says that our actions are judged by intentions. If we mean to pray, when we pray, the, the words of the Quran or whatever, and we're glorifying God, we will be rewarded. And vain repetition, as you quoted it, is what Jesus is, is cautioning about. Not sincere repetition. How is it sincere? And also, repeat I've told you. Name I've just told you. It's not sincere. It is sincere. I've because when it. we see, I've when we saw it. the parable I've done it. of the Pharisee so and the taxpayer, what happened? The Pharisee said, "God, thank you. I'm not like these people." So, the, fa the taxpayer ripped his clothes so, so, and was sincere right. about his prayers. Right. So, so my point is, is my, my, as I've answered your question, my point to you is, why do no, you no, eat you pork? You, why do you, you eat pork question when I Jesus said, says to in be Matthew fulfilled. chapter 5, I said what it can't be. So it tell cannot, me what it is. No, let me say, it matters because your argument okay. is, is the wrong answer. If you don't know what it is, how can you know what it can't be? Because logically, I can demonstrate. Listen, you'll learn. Listen and you'll learn. When Jesus says, whoever breaks the least of these commandments and teaches others will be called the very least. No, it doesn't will be called the greatest. We know that it cannot mean that the law is abolished because he's telling people to obey the law. All right. right. So, so any option, logical yes. option that says the law has been abolished, as Paul says in Ephesians 2.15, where he says the law with its commandments and regulations has been abolished, but Paul followed a different religion than Jesus. Christians follow Paul today. Muslims, ironically, it is ironically, follow the teachings of Jesus on this important matter of the law. Why do you eat pork when Jesus says, whoever breaks the least of those commandments and teaches others will be called the very least in the kingdom because of God? Paul has Why no understanding them? of messianic prophecies in terms of the old religious system in terms of the mosaic law they all pointed towards christ and its fulfillment this is why for example when someone said to before about the greatest commandments and i'm going to read it again when jesus says teacher teacher what is the greatest commandment jesus replied love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind this is the first greatest commandment and the second like it is like it love your neighbor as yourself so he says all the law and the prophets hang on to these two commandments. So what Jesus is saying is that all the Old Testament laws are now can be encompassed by these two laws because it's all about prophetic fulfillment. So for example, no, 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 you had a sacrificial system, right? That Jews went to the temple, they sacrificed animals for the forgiveness of their sin. They had the day of atonement. Christ was the new sacrificial lamb. So he is fulfilling what was pointing towards his arrival. That is how you fulfill something because yes, we ca God cannot break a law because it means that there's something wrong with it. But to be fulfilled means that all these things were temp It's like if you have a credit card, you, you buy something on your credit card, but the money has not been paid. So it's then on hold until you actually pay off your credit card. So G it's basically the same sort of thing that the, 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 the sacrificial system was for atonement. Christ came for forgiveness of sins. Yes. Firstly, you said that there are, two, there are two commandments that they still need to follow. Right? The two greatest commandments. Okay. So therefore, all the laws well, and the commandments and haven't been abolished, right? If you're saying they have been abolished, then you don't even In need to In terms of the ceremonial two. laws, we still keep like moral laws. Why did you make that difference? Because Jesus spoke about, he reiterated, do not kill, do not steal, for example. Why did he do that? 
because those are the moral laws that so we will keep. So you still need to follow some set of laws. Yes. Yes. Okay. So why? they do say that I'll be that because say that as well. So because the, because the thing is, Diversion. the law is about fulfilment. So then it now takes on a spiritual sense because the laws in the Old Testament were to, in a way, to keep people righteous, right? So they will know what their sins are. But then you have a new covenant which means you're not bound by these old things because this is why Jesus criticized the Pharisees. For example, someone can like wear, for example, a hijab. To the outsider, it looks like they're a righteous person, but they could be going off and doing some whatever behind closed doors. So the Pharisees, for example, Jesus called them dirty cups. On the outside, they look pristine or dirt, dirt, dirty bones. Exactly. So the law, you can follow the law. Even give me, let me give you a better example. ISIS. They follow the five pillars, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, no, because they follow the five pillars, but you say they're not Muslims. No, but, no, we're not yeah. saying that. No, 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 don't put words in our mouth. I, in, so just, if you, if you, criminal so would you, scum. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Thing, they're criminal. So they can still be Muslims. Yeah, yeah but in terms of, they're they're if, if they're killers, then they're out of the fold of Islam. No, 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 no. So you say that, that's not Islam. So but they're just, are they good Muslims? Do you want to do that? Bad Muslims, Okay. Bad Muslims. Thank you. But in their eyesight, in their eyesight, Listen, 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 that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> what you think. I, I understand. They believe in well, You have no idea how Islam works. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So can, 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 can I now answer you? My point was this. If they follow the five pillars, they think that that justifies them before God. The Pharisees did the same thing. Following the laws of Moses. You get that from the Bible as well because it's not in Islam. So let me finish my point. Because what I'm saying, I said to you, the Pharisees followed the law. The Pharisees followed the law, thinking they were justified by the law. They were. But when the new covenant came, it's justification by the heart. God judges what's inside. That's why when you have anti-Semitism, that's good for you. Let's look at your Quran and see what it says, and your prophet says about anti-Semitism. That's a clever remark. Right. So don't throw those accusations on the Bible, because that's what he does, red herrings. Exactly. Why would it be? Because, it, because uh, it's, it's actually true, the Christian churches have repented of this kind of uh, Christian supremacism which, uh, which uh, misrepresents the Jewish faith as a religion of works, not a religion of grace. And it's even so why is that anti -semitism? Excuse me. Um, and uh, these days, there's a new appreciation by leading biblical scholars like Jimmy Dunn and Ed Sanders. Who, 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 who... It's not the appeal to authority. Well, who, who are you? I mean, it's a fallacy. Things. It's not a fallacy. A scholar... Um, what? Is there opinion okay, about to do with anything? We're going please. by scripture. I'm, I'm not making a proof. I'm illustrating okay. a, a description. You're mistaking a description for a proof. That's a fallacy. Uh, Make your point. Because he's appealing to scholars. <laughs> not everything scholar I say is a logical X, y, statement. Wow. Big deal. Okay. So what I'm saying is that, that in mainstream scholarship, mainstream churches, like Liberal Catholic... Scholars. We're dealing with liberal scholars, person. that's what he deals like with. Like the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of England and Methodists and so on. There's a renewed appreciation of the way Christians have misrepresented and traduced the truth about Judaism. Misrepresenting is a religion of works and Christianity is a religion of grace. And this has deep roots in, uh, historically in the anti-Semitism that we see in the church, where the Jews are the other, that they don't believe what we grace-filled children have got. This is historically very much part of the anti-Semitic anti trope that Western Christians have used against Jews. Now, mainstream Christians uh, are, are, have repented of this error. Unfortunately, many people who come to speakers call are not even aware there's an issue here, like he said, red herring, didn't know anything about it. But the mainstream red churches herring. are being very aware of the way that Jews have been miscast and misrepresented by Christians as something they're, they're not. Extremism. And the way, and the way you look do Look at that, the words of Christ, you know, criticizing you know, the Pharisees okay, fine, for their know, actions. Fine. So what has that got to do with the church? So, We're reading so, what Jesus uh, said so when I say about the Pharisees of the time. This is why I said hurts. it's a um, red herring. He's appealing to... Right. So coming back to my point here, if you look at Matthew's Gospel, and he's not addressing any of the specifics I raised in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, and also Matthew 23, Jesus clearly hey, calls boy. his disciples in the kingdom of God to obey whatever they teach you. This is the people who sit on Moses' seat. Now, if the next, this is the end of Jesus' ministry. Does he suddenly miraculously, one page later, say, oh, well, I've changed my mind, everything's different now. Oh, no, you don't, you don't follow that. You're saved by faith alone. Does he say that? Of course he doesn't. The next few pages, we have the crucifixion, the anointing in Bethany, we have, and then the resurrection. And then the statement at the very end says, go into all the world, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. 
what he commanded them was what he's just been preaching them in his ministry. His ministry teaches to obey the Torah. Now, what's revolutionary about this, and I don't think it's historical, by the way, it's not as if I'm a fan of Matthew, because I think there's a problem with it, but what Matthew has, I would argue, and he won't like me saying this, but uh, some top scholars also say this, uh, appeal to authority, fallacy, fallacy, at Harvard, I'm thinking a particular chapter at Harvard, in his wonderful commentary on Matthew, he says that Matthew believes the Gentiles should obey the law. And this is quite something, uh, even I don't think that. So he says the Gentiles and the Jews, everyone should obey the Torah. Now that's quite an extreme position, I think, that Matthew is arguing for. Because if all the nations have to be told to obey everything Jesus said, and he is saying repeatedly that you must obey the law in the kingdom of God, what conclusion are we to draw? Now, I don't, Luke doesn't conclude that, Paul doesn't conclude that, Mark doesn't, neither does John, but Matthew uniquely does. And I think this is unhistorical, and it's just not true, it's but I'm going by your... Historical. I'm just going by what your text says. Is the, is the crucifixion historical? Are we change the subject now? No, because no, you're no, questioning the historicity. Wait, I, so think, I'm I, think, I think the main question what you're saying is like, right. how do you, how now, do you counteract... Now, the, the, let's go let to just, the book of just, Hebrews. Let me just quickly... What no. are you saying? Hebrews is not Matthew. Do you, I don't care. How do you counteract all the verses? He doesn't care. We're talking about the book of Matthew. He doesn't care. You have to obey the law. You have to obey the commandments. I'm going to give you... I said earlier on, Scripture interprets Scripture. So, we'll go to the book of Hebrews. It says, therefore, he speaking of Christ. Right. Why, speaking why of Christ, say? yes, okay. speaking of Christ, because it summarizes. Is he going to talk the about the Gospel point. of Matthew so or says, not? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant. Who says this? So that those who, who are called. That? Who says this? This is the book of Hebrews. So it's not it's Matthew. Not Jesus speaking. It's not Jesus no, speaking. I'm going to give you a summary. And it's not then Matthew speaking. Back into it, but I'm going to summarize <laughs> right. and then expand. <laughs> so it says, okay. therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Since death has occurred, that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. That's the law of Moses. Yeah, of yeah, I, that says where a will that. is involved, the death of the one who is made, it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore... Not even the first covenant was in a, in a, inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of the calves and the goats. With water and scarlet wool, hyssop sprinkled both You're losing the people. book. It doesn't matter. They can, they, can, they can pay attention. If they lose, that's not my problem. So it's saying, this is the blood of the new covenant God has commanded for you. Thank you. So what this is talking about is that you had an old covenant called the Mosaic Covenant, which was inaugurated by blood, which was circumcision. Oh, sorry, that was um, Abrahamic. Um, the co you had a covenant with Abraham. Well, I've learned something new today, I must say, folks. You've heard it first on... And then you had the Mosaic <laughs> Covenant. <laughs> Content over the, everything. <laughs> which was the sacrificial system, which was yeah. Israelites were covered yeah. by blood. Yeah. Then it's talking about a new covenant, oh, which Dower. is then established by the splint shedding of blood. Uh -huh. So when Jesus was crucified, that was the end of the first <laughs> covenant, the, well, old co it, yeah. the Mosaic Covenant. Uh -huh. So when it says that something has to be fulfilled, for the laws to be abolished, it was the new covenant that has to start, yeah. which was what it says that um, it has to be established by the blood of the testament, the test, test, testator, which was Christ. So therefore, when you have a new covenant, the old Mosaic covenant is abolished. And this is why when you have Paul and stuff talking about the sacrificial system, that Paul. Christ was the fulfillment of the Mosaic law. Exactly. That therefore you do not need to go to the temple to make sacrifices. That's why this, the, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed because Jesus said, I shall destroy this temple and rebuild it within three days, yeah. right? Because it's a new covenant. So therefore you don't need to go to the temple and pray and make sacrifices because Jesus fulfills, not abolishes, Do he you fulfills. need to go there at all? No, not anymore. Well, the disciples did in Book of Acts. They went to the temple to uh, sacrifice in Acts chapter three. But you were saying. So again, so as I say, <laughs> that's why we are now not bound to go and make a sacrifice to atone for our sins. Why do the disciples go to the temple and sacrifice in Acts then? So again, so when Jesus said, because no, I asked him specifically, I asked him when Jesus says, yeah, not, how does he it, explain it? I said oh, to him, still still sacrifice. Like, listen, you listen to, wait, wait, let me Jesus. finish my point. Huh? Because in Acts, by because what have, of listen Jesus. to what I'm saying. I so I'm saying Sorry. that when, Hi mum. 
made me forget my point. But I'm Sorry. saying, so when Christ, when Christ, when, no, no, when Christ said, I've, when, when, when Christ says, not a jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until, that's a conditional clause. Until what? Until something happens. Heaven until and it, earth pass and, away. No, that's not what it's that's saying. That's what it says, until it's heaven and earth pass away. It says, will not pass away Has until. Has heaven and earth pass away? Mm, no, no let's it go hasn't. Back, let's, let's go back and read the words and break it down. Five, I think 518. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until... Uh, sorry, until, for truly I... Sorry, yes. for tr I just start from the beginning of the yes. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away... Yes. Hmm, Keep nope, going. it's still here. Keep going. Um, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Right, so now so what has to be accomplished for it to pass away? until heaven and earth pass oh. away. So is that it? Is has, that what you think? Has heaven and earth passed away? So I, it hasn't passed okay. away. Okay. Let's, is that right? No. Is that right, what he said? Why is he it because, says, I, I, for truly I tell yes. you, until heaven and earth pass away. So in yes. other words, until the end of the universe, no. not one letter, it's not an, one stroke of a letter will Because it's like an idiomatic is, expression. What does so it what, mean? Sorry? Idiomatic expression. Go on. So he's saying figuratively. Because Jesus that? used to, because Jesus speaks in parables. Yeah, how do you know that? This is not a because parable. Because he says something has this to be fulfilled. Because when we go into the Old Testament, when we go into the Old Testament, that's why I read out Hebrews. It talks about a new testament starting a new covenant. So therefore the old covenant has to pass away with the Mosaic law. For the new for the new covenant. Does that include okay, the Ten Commandments? Right, can I answer that? Okay, now? wait, wait, can let I me just to what let me saying? let me just give you a verse to back that up. This is why I went then to I'll Malachi. Respond to what you're saying, yeah? That's a valid and, question though. Yeah, let me just read Malachi and I'll yeah, answer your I'm question. Not, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know, when I read that, that sounds kind of Until strange. heaven and earth yeah. pass away. Yeah, listen to this. Heaven and earth hasn't it says, passed Behold, away. Maybe I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. What is the new? Co what is the covenant he's bringing? Yeah. That's the abolishment of the Mosaic law. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's, 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 that's not what it says. The You're whole. adding, that's not what it yes. says. The, the, Ten Commandments, because that's in the old. Yeah, the, the, so that's a because now. because what when you read what Christ talks, he's There's now talks about it. the kingdom of God, which and it goes into a spiritual sense because the the old Mosaic laws are not to be kept in terms of the ceremonial. Oh, yes, we keep. Does that, does that, does that say specifically? Well, right. you can find he's interpreting. He's, interpret he's putting no. an interpretation to that. No, yes. because you if are. I, yes. If I go. Yes. Well, you can I have to, to because I'll fun, have to again that's, that's bring point. scripture. Anyway, if you want me to I, bring scripture, I, um, I will bring scripture. But I just part, because when we look at what no, Paul me, is talking about, okay, let's which go to Paul. Is Paul? No, which Paul? Is that the all of confusion? Brother, please. Can, can, can I can I just respond to some of this? Yes. This is a, 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 a sort of matter of Christian uh, mystifying and spinning things out of nothing. If you look at actual predictions of the new covenant uh, in Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah 31. 31, a very yeah. famous verse, which Christians like to think backs up their case, actually refutes them. Okay. For the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I make a new covenant yes. with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, okay. right, with the Jews. It would not like be the covenant I made with ancestors when I took them out of the hand of Egypt, out of the land of what Egypt. Is a new covenant? A covenant uh, that they broke, though I was their husband, says what the Lord. The new Can I finish reading this? Like You're interrupting me. Do you want to hear the word of the Lord? Yeah, I'm asking. Well, the listen is? to the word of right. the Lord, okay. brother. All right, you can answer that afterwards. <laughs> but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel yeah. after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. Thank you. I will be their God and they will be my people. Will be now, let me, now let me point this out. The law uh, is no longer an external reality. The moral according laws. To, uh, to, it doesn't say the moral law, it says the law. Laws? Which law? Will you let me you stop interrupting? Oh, no. Bloody hell, excuse my French. When a Jew hears talking about the law, he's not thinking, mm, I mean the moral laws. He's thinking about the 613 commandments given to Moses. That is the law given to Moses on Mount Sinai. When it says in Jeremiah 31 31 that he will write it on their hearts, he means the Jewish law, the 613 commandments are going to be written on their hearts, not the moral law or just the Ten Commandments. That's a Christian, uh, later Christian idea. It means the Torah. So it, nothing changed. What I'm trying to say is in the New Covenant, nothing changes as regards the content and application of the Jewish law. It's still applicable. It's still to be obeyed. It is no longer, as it then goes on to say, 
Next verse, no longer shall they teach each other and say to each other, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. So now they all have that personal acquaintance with the law written on their hearts. But it's still the 613 commandments of the law. And when Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, do not think I've come to abolish the law, but in fact, it's a more radical um, uh, obedience to the law, much deeper application of the law, which uh, takes into account your radical, the heart motivation. You've got to be compassionate, you've got to have faith and mercy. He's not saying it's abolished. Do not think I've come to abolish it. And at the very end of his, of his career, he says that the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, obey everything they teach you and follow it. Follow the commandments of the Jewish law. He is not saying just obey the moral law or whatever aspect of the law you may say. It's a good example of Matthew 15 where Jesus is yes. talking about the Pharisees and he's telling them, this why, is... do you, why do you follow the traditions of man? Thank you, thank you. Uh, young Mr. Albanian yeah. man, what is your name? Why is it, uh... Yeah, but he's yes. telling them, he's yes. deliberately telling thank them. Thank you. Yes. This is a very good you're point. supposed to be following the law, yes. and he actually gives them exactly. an example of commandment. What is the when? example because they give? Well, the there's two examples. Uh, because that's hang on, not, that's, hang on. That's, 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 no, let me just your point. Because because what you wait, wait, don't push me Let me just address your point, because... I don't know, I genuinely want to read it, because I just... You said there's two there's two commandments, aren't there? That The 15th there. The two because commandments that Jesus says the Pharisees are ignoring. One of them, of course, is honour your father and mother. And the second commandment, have you found the passage? Yeah, there, yeah. And the second commandment, shall I tell them what it is or do you want to read it out? Okay, listen. I don't think it's this one. Yes, it is that one. Because why you have to Because they're trying to confuse me. Shall I show you? Right. Okay. Because I was talking about um, honour thy father and mother puts a death. Put to death the rebellious the son. Rebellious son yeah. Exactly. So the two commandments. Do you, want to, do you want to read it out? I was right, right? You were, but I was right about the chapter, wrong about the passage. Do you want to read it out? These Albanians are pretty wicked when it comes to biblical exegesis. What, what, what are the two verses? The two verses. That, 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 this, is a, this is a great illustration of my point. The point is that. Like, Don't you know, we just go around telling people you're not yeah. the law, but you're saying that it's to do with. Let me give you an problem. example. No, no, we're giving saying, you an example. I'm saying, like, he's rebuking <laughs> people, yeah. he's rebuking the Pharisees, and yeah. he's giving an example about it. And he says, Then Pharisees and scribes, then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, no. Then the Pharisees, just don't put the camera on me. But, then the Pharisees and scribes came to sir? Jerusalem, <laughs> came from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks ill of father or mother must surely die. Wow. Is that a quote from the Leviticus or Deuteronomy? It, um, I think it's Deuteronomy. Uh, I've not read the bottom page. Anyway, it is actually it's All mentioned right. twice in the Viticus so and Deuteronomy. I'm going uh, to read from this scripture so and then I'm going to answer. That, I, haven't, I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished. Last, I haven't finished yet. He's, he's rebuking people. He's but telling people to the follow the commandments. He's given them examples of the commandments. Yes. He's telling he's telling the people at the end of the of chapter 15 to go out and tell people he, he's follow what I've commanded. I don't understand which part of that is. Right. So, so now, let, let, let me just finish off. Now, in, in I'm going Matthew, to I'm gonna I, respond because he, he said it. your point. Yeah. No, but I haven't you can finished. wait till I've spoken no, because but I haven't finished. he was making his point. No, he is so an ancillary to so my point. So if we go to the book of Romans, so, so, if you two want to have a conversation, because, if this, because it's a you, no, because you wanted to make a point, otherwise you cannot yeah, continue. It's part of my point. If that, you don't want to have a no, conversation, that's fine. No, I, I, I interrupted him. Yeah, him. yeah, but now let me make no, my point no, to no, that. No, because you're saying too many things. Now he can, yeah, I'm making one point. The same point. So my point is this. All right, cool. You two can have a conversation. Yeah, but let me let me interject, and then he can make his point. Because if we go to Romans, let me make the point, and then if we go to the book of Romans, for example, by Jesus, Jesus, Paul says, Paul, Jesus wrote Romans. Because I'm going to answer that, your question. But Paul says, For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Whoa. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Whoa. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. I think I know what you're that yes. the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled it's in Deuteronomy 31. Yeah. Yeah. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in yeah. us, yeah. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh 
do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now Jesus is talking about following the Mosaic uh, that laws. Was Paul, by the way. And I, I said Jesus is talking about following the Mosaic laws in yeah. in the Gospels, is there right? A, can you just reread that last part, just that last bit where you said about you death and good life. So it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now what happened after, the, after Christ? We see the pouring out of the Spirit. This is what he also read. This was the sign of the new covenant, right? Because we now try and move from the carnally minded law of Moses, which was just to protect people More anti from, you see, red herrings. This is what he liked to do. So what he's talking about, the law of Moses, had a specific purpose. And this is why Jesus criticized the Pharisees because they were carnally minded. They lived by the law and they thought they were just specifically yeah, justified by, by the law. That's they, why he was when Jesus called them em, um, a bag of empty bones or whatever. Why was it, uh, why didn't separate them? Yeah. So he's talking about these are people who justify themselves before the law. They sit on Moses' seat, right? Yeah, but, what he was so saying let, is yeah, but yes, but let me I, finish because, my point. But yeah, am I right? Because am what, I right you are right. What Paul is saying. Yes, they Paul? Me or they, be the apostle Paul? Well, I'm confused. You, because what well, Jesus right is saying, that, let genuinely. me finish my point. I know, I know, but like, I just let me finish my point. Because what Paul is saying point. is that the law of Moses only had a specific purpose. And then afterwards, it was to be spiritually minded, not carnally minded. So after Christ, we sing, see things like, Islamic you know, the day of Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. This was the sign of the new covenant. And this is why I think when he re read Jeremiah, it talks about, you know, the sign, the spirit, and things being put into the heart, the law. Yes, so it's, this is a spiritual law. It's not necessarily the, because if you had the Mosaic law, why would then God transfer the book to your heart? It wouldn't make sense. It's his you idea, already have the yours. book of the Torah. God is talking about a transformation and you have the moral law. Right? That's what will be in our hearts as a guidance. And this is why I read Hebrews, which talked about the death of the testator to bring in a new covenant. So when Jesus is saying to them, right. obey the laws, this is like me saying the UK is going to leave the EU. But are we? we are still engaging in the European are. Parliament not, until we exit. That's a really low exactly. A Brexit so analogy for Christian to them, theology. I'm okay, impressed. the law is wow. going to be broken. Even Brexit gets wheeled out to support yeah. the Bible. He's telling them, obey wow. it until the law is fulfilled. That's why he can say to yeah. them, until heaven and earth do this. pass away. Until. Like not until it's fulfilled. Until heaven no, and earth pass away. No, because the, script, the scripture right. is for. I'm who not, is the, not, who, who is right. it? Who is the New Testament for? Who is the New Testament for? It's for the church. The church has the authority. It's a Pauline church. Who is the New Testament? Not the Jewish churches. It's not the Jewish churches. It's not, the churches. It's it's not for the Muslims. Excuse me, I'd like to speak now. I'd like to speak. Right. Coming back to my. I'm saying, who has the right to interpret the scripture? Right. Uh, I have a right because I'm no, standing. No, you don't. As a Muslim, I have you do a right. not have a right. I do. No. The, the Again, more Christian and the scripture supremacism was written for the Arabic, church. That only they can touch the Bible. More Christian supremacism. Right, let me now respond to this. Do you want me to bring out verses? Christian supremacism. Alvin, can, can I just respond? I come, I, I come back to my point. In according to Matthew's Gospel, Jesus clearly teaches in the kingdom of God, so it's going to be boring, but this has not been addressed, that you must obey the law in the kingdom of God. And at the very end, Jesus says, go to all the nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now, saying new covenant doesn't change anything. We still have what he's commanded them in all of the gospel. But he just read the Old uh, Testament so where he spoke about a new covenant and the law being put on their heart. Yes. yes. Well, so therefore, okay, this you refutes your point. No, actually, it backs up my point. Jeremiah 31, 31 is a prophecy of a new covenant where that self-same law that Jews know is written on their hearts. The law doesn't change. The law doesn't change. It's not been abolished. It's not been abrogated. It's not been changed. Whatever fulfilled means, logically we know it cannot mean one option, the very option you prefer, that it's been cancelled and abolished. Then so exactly. You're this is the you're fallacy of what he's saying. Unless you can what tell me what it means. What he's saying is that it's removing... Why can't I just yes. finish what I'm saying? The thing is that it cannot be. 
according when you remove the things it cannot be according to his interpretation i told that's why i said the scripture is for the church to interpret this is why he doesn't know what it means to be fulfilled well i do i used to be, I used to be a christian words. You don't have to be a Christian yeah, to interpret and you're not the Bible. A Christian because you couldn't interpret the scripture. How do you know? You never knew me as a Christian. Because if right, you coming knew back, what the scripture well, said, you would still be following it. I do know what it's because I understand. This is why he appeals to scholars. Can I? Can I? Can I finish? And liberal scholars. Can I finish? Oh, if, if we have multiple conversations, it makes it hard. Just a, just a point of biography here. It's because I investigated the scriptures as a Christian that I found them to be problematic in key areas, to be an error in key areas. For example, the New the Testament, the New Testament, no, I was a Christian, remember? Not a Muslim. Muslims, Christians believe in the crucifixion. Maybe you didn't realize But that. you don't believe in it now. No, he believed in it at one time. You're just like, um, what's the word, on, online? Um, uh, um, as a Christian, I found, I did, just reading the scriptures carefully and attentively, there were massive problems with it. For example, in the New Testament, there are repeated warnings about the imminent end of the world within the lifetime of people then living. Uh, it's, it's a passage in uh, Mark 13, uh, th verse 30, 31, that says that this generation will not pass away until all these things, including the uh, destruction of a temple, uh, and the end of the world will happen. Paul says at the end of 1 Corinthians that we will not all die, some of us will live, be alive when Jesus returns. Clearly that didn't happen, that's a, a failed prediction. Repeatedly in, in the New Testament the, there is a view that the end is about to happen. We are now here 2,000 years later and we're no nearer to the end then as we are now. This has been falsified actually. So the problems I had with the Bible were as a born again, spirit filled, committed Christian, no not as a Muslim. <laughs> as a Muslim, I, fa I found solutions spirit. to the Bible because I then realized I had the key. The key is the Quran to unlock the, the falsity and the truth in the Bible. Coming back to Jesus being the Lamb of God, I'm sorry, this is going to sound crass, but Jesus was not a lamb. He didn't have a furry tail, he didn't have four legs, he was a guy and had, didn't have a tail, I'm afraid. Jesus was not a lamb. The idea of human sacrifice, notice how they slip into lamb language, which is acceptable, but in fact Jesus was a man. If you see any picture, even in a church, you will not see Jesus, you will not see Jesus with a tail at all. He's a man, Thank you. Uh, any man. Thank you very much. So the point is now he's proven he doesn't know how to interpret yeah, I'm scripture. Finished. I'm finished. Because it's not talking literally. So therefore if he's saying Jesus is not a lamb, if it's not, he has disproven himself. Exactly. What did the scripture say? Okay. Carnally it's, minded. It's, it's, no no one finish. says Jesus is, was literally a lamb. If it's not literal, yes. that means it Thank is a human you. sacrifice. Thank you, Arbin. These Albanians have got a wicked no. intelligence, you know. They can really if get If you the, take it, these yeah. Albanians literal, are amazing. then you can right. say what you like, just said. Right. But uh, if you don't, which is what you're saying, he is... Right, if I can continue. Thank you, thank you. Right, just to... Hey, I'll take the Christians at their word, and Jesus is not meant to be physically a lamb. Then we have a bigger problem still. He's a human, He's a human being who is sacrificed. What does the Bible say about human sacrifice? A bad news, I'm afraid. Repeatedly, God says that human sacrifices are an abomination to God. And there is nothing in the Torah that makes any provision for human sacrifice. The only sacrifice you can have are lambs and pigeons and flour and so on. So either way, you lose. If you lose, it's a human sacrifice. And if you say, if you say it's a, hang on a second, if it's a lamb, also it fails. Because in the Torah, it said it must be an unspotted, unblemished lamb. Jesus, according to the Gospels, was beaten to a pulp where before he was put on the cross. So even if you think Jesus had a tail and lots of wool, he was a, a, a lamb that was badly beaten, according to the Gospels. And thus, he would not be a valid sacrifice in the Torah. So I'm afraid Christian, Christian uh, arguments, as soon as you, if you look at them at a distance, they seem quite nice. But if you look at them closely, do you know what they do? They all collapse. They all just disintegrate because there's no reality to them. Jesus was not a lamb, he was a man, human sacrifice prohibited. If he was a lamb, he was beaten to a pulp. That is an invalid sacrifice according to the Torah. Either way, uh -uh, you lose. Shouldn't it be a goat? Surely all the, all the sins because, of Israel were put on the goat and left it was like because You're saying Paul, Jesus should be a goat. What, what These Paul, are Albanians, what I tell Paul you. What Paul does <laughs> is appeal to a lot of fallacies and red I've herring. heard it all now. Because let's, for example... <laughs> How could you argue that up in... Day of Atonement. No. Okay, okay. No, in okay. Leviticus chapter 15, yeah. Day of Atonement. Good point, actually. Jesus is not a goat or a lamb. I'm sorry to break your, because you break your heart what, on what this. Like, what Muslims like to use... Muslims is, like to use... All 1.8 billionaires. That's what we what, always okay, do. Let me... What the Dawah team like to do... The team. 
I didn't say you what. Whoever it applies the Dow, I said the Dow team. <laughs> Dow team like Paul. <laughs> what they like to use I'm not part of a team. is use provocative words like human sacrifice. That's what but you when believe. We go you to believe the, Jesus when we go, sacrificed when for sin. That's exactly for what example, you believe. Let me speak now. I let you speak. It says in Surah Al Hajj 22, 58, 59, it says, to those who leave their homes in the cause of Allah and they are then slain or die, on them will Allah bestow a verily a good provision. So if you go to, that is what you call a martyr. A martyr is, is someone a, who dies in the cause of Allah. But not and a Allah sacrifice Allah is pleased for sin. with it's you giving your life it's not as a, a human it's sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice that for sin. That is sin. a martyr. No, because no, no, if you're no, a Muslim no, no, no. and silly, you go to war silly, and you know silly. you're not going to come back, it's not a sacrifice for sin. That is pleasing to Allah. So what I'm saying to you is this. No, because Calm what I'm out. saying, Calm let me down. finish my point. If I save your let life, I sacrifice point. myself to save your life. That's, I'm not, Thank you very much. I'm Jesus came myself. to do what? I don't get put on a Thank you very much. Lamb. Jesus came You're not to give his life I'm for the sin sins of mankind. For God so no, loved no, no. the world that he gave his only begotten son. So therefore, so you have just proved, you just proved our point. You've just said, it's not... Am I a sinner? You just said, you, what did you say? You said I it's said, not a sacrifice. If I save your life, yes. I sacrifice myself, but right. I'm not a sin offering. You, right? Now you didn't say but before, now you're adding that in. Say what yeah. you said before. No. I literally just said what I said before. You did. You said, he did. If I, you I, give I your life for someone. It's not a sin offering. I didn't not, say if I give my life for someone, I was talking about you, man. It's not a sin offering. Again, I'm not you're a misrepresenting. When you were talking about a martyr, you said it's not a human sacrifice if you give your life for other people. It's a time waste, I'm afraid. It's, it's, it's it is. He doesn't because, want to listen. No, because listen to what I'm saying. Right, it's look, my look. turn. It's my turn now. Let, you, let me finish my point. Let me He's going to make a point. I'm going to make a point. Right, we're going to wrap up. Let me, yeah, let me make my point. So, because, let me make my point without interruption. Oh, well, I may not be available. You just can't. I'm not a public pump. You could just use like, oh, pump, pump, pump. You ask me if you wouldn't mind if I answered your question. Get to the point. Thank you. The answer is no. I'm going home. Right now, you can't just use me. Oh, I'm going to ask you a question. No, you can't ask me. Right, so my final wrap up point is, and I say this yeah. then I will end, whatever you may think, Jesus did not teach that only through his human sacrifice or his badly battered lamb sacrifice, which is invalid, will sins be forgiven. No, let's look at all the Gospels. For example, this is a great example in Mark chapter 10. A man came up to Jesus and said, you probably haven't heard this before, Albanian. <laughs> Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. Then he said, I don't need a chorus, thank you. I don't need a chorus. Then Jesus said, obey the commandments. Uh, you don't know, he lists some of the commandments. And then Jesus said to him, sorry, the man said to Jesus, teacher, notice he drops the good now, he gets the point. Jesus is not good, only God is good. I've kept all these since I was a youth. Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, you like, how many things? May I buy your finger for old time's sake? Oh, come on. One thing. Thank you, Arvin. Now, the, several years ago, he and I used to have a double act down here, didn't we? I, I used to wheel out the, out the finger. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. You're, you're playing finger games. No, because it's a serious point. It's a serious point. Oh, he's showing, harassing me. It's a simple point. The reason we do this is because people forget what is said. Finger, Arbin, 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 finger. Right, Jesus, the, not the middle finger, the index, that, 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 just stick it out. That's a much better finger. Jesus says, you lack one thing. What is the one thing the man lacks to be saved, to get eternal life? Remember, he's obeyed the law. Jesus says to him, uh, the man said to him, I obeyed all those since I was a youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him and says, you lack one thing. Now, there's a reason I'm stressing this, because he will forget his one thing. As night follows day, they forget. The one thing he lacks is this, according to Jesus. Go sell what you own and give your money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. That's the one thing he lacked. And if that man had gone out and given treasure to the poor, he would have been saved. If he died on that spot, he would have gone to paradise. This is the message, the gospel, you will never hear from Christians. This is the gospel of Jesus of Nazareth, the Islamic prophet. It is not the gospel of Christians who preach Paul. Paul in Romans, Paul in Hebrews. He quotes anyone but Jesus. The gospel of Jesus is very, it's a different religion. It's a gospel, it's a religion of Jesus, 
what they preach is a religion about Jesus, a, a religion about Jesus. Islam is a call back to follow the religion of Jesus, the religion of one God without partners, a religion where you are saved by the mercy and grace of God, not by the sacrifice of a human being or a severely battered lamb uh, who is not actually qualified. Yes. <laughs> Does it say Gospel of Jesus? Yes. Oh. One of them? Yes. I think all of them are Gospel of Jesus. Oh, oh, thank, nice. thank you, thank you. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. I don't think that okay. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Thank you. Good. So the Gospel of Jesus um, is that you are saved through uh, the mercy of God through obeying the law in this case, just as we as Muslims must obey the Sharia, but we know from a really important hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when um, Prophet Muhammad said, no one is saved by their good works alone. And, and the companion said to Muhammad, what, not even you, O messenger of God, you're not saved by your good works? And Muhammad said, no, not even I, unless God enfolds me in his mercy. Even Muhammad does not get to paradise except through the mercy of God. This is quintessentially the, G, the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of Muhammad, and the gospel of all the prophets of God. The religion that our Christian brothers preach is a man-made religion, a religion about Jesus, where you have to sacrifice a human being or a lamb to get in God's good graces so you can be forgiven and go to paradise. That's not what Jesus taught. Thank you very much. All right, now let me make my conclusion. Uh, what's, what's your name? Arbin. Arbin. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Don't take it the wrong uh, way. I thought it's to do with me. Hi there. Yeah. I thought you yeah. and I were debating. Yeah, but I'm going to. But, but, I want to make but, a point to him. <laughs> Arbin. Sorry, sorry, uh, Arbin. Yeah. Now, poor Arbin. Don't don't take offence to this just question. Just got the Albania as well. Are, are you are you gay? Ooh. All right. He said he's not gay. So if I came to you, if someone let's say this someone comes to you oh, next right. week yeah. and says, yeah. "What's your name?" Are you going to say, "I'm gay, Arbin"? What's this got to do with Jesus or the gospel? Yeah, if, would you say to someone... Have I just morphed into the twilight If someone zone? says, what's your name? Would you say, I'm gay, Arbin? Um, yeah, I'll say no for the sake of argument. Why not? It doesn't make sense. Because, <laughs> because you're not gay, right? No, because that's not my name. Yeah, but would you say people know me as gay, Arbin? Would you what? say something like that? Anyway, folks, thanks for a lovely my discussion is, on Jesus. My, po and <laughs> my point is... <laughs> Let's all go home now. <laughs> Let me just no, make let my point. Because, sir? Tell me about it. I'm dying for yeah. so what, what, the, the My point is this. Okay. He's not gay. And if someone addressed him as gay Arbin, he would not refer to himself as that because he's not gay. Wow. No, but no, then, no. That's deep, man. It's deep. My name. Okay. That's, but I'm not saying as your name, but as in a Title. reference to, yes. Okay. Would you, ex if someone called you gay, would you, would you accept um, Can we talk about Jesus, but, okay, please? Okay, let me, let me, uh, let, I mean, let, let me, let me, uh, just, the law, because uh, basically he wouldn't do it. Funny, right? Just like, okay, <laughs> let me ask you the same <laughs> question. <laughs> if someone called you gay, this is what you accept that name? <laughs> <laughs> All right. His because finger, by the way, Paul, was just figurative. Uh, it I wasn't finish, phallic. Can I finish my point? Well, can you start your point? You haven't even started your point yet. My point is this. Now, Paul said the man came to Jesus. And Jesus said, only God is good, right? No, no, um, no he was saying, good, good teacher, teacher, what must I do? And, good, exactly. and then Jesus only corrected God him. God is yeah. good. Then, yeah. But when we go to the book of John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Different gospel. So if only God is different good, gospel. Jesus is telling you that he is and God. Not, no, because Jesus is telling then, you don't clearly. Him, <laughs> because if Jesus is calling himself, listening, right? no. I know. And uh, let me talk to the camera we because these two don't want to no, 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 listen. We're listening. I'm just saying. So Fine. clearly, his finger, if though. Jesus said so to this about? man that only God is good, but then he called himself the good shepherd, Jesus is calling himself good and he's equating himself to God. Now, no, he's not. to prove this point, <laughs> you go to the book of Matthew 10, 11, <coughs> when they said to... I'm a good shepherd. I mean, I'm the God. people came to Jesus <laughs> and they asked him about who John the Baptist was. And I'm going to close on this. And it says, he did not listen to me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowd concerning John the Baptist. It says, what did you go out to the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing. Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. Then Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, he says this. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who shall prepare the way before you. 
Now, this is what we call a precept in biblical terms. It means that there's a scripture that it relates to. Jesus is reading a prophecy. We go to the book of Isaiah, verse four, chapter 40, verse 3. Now it says, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. But the word Lord here is the divine name of God. So the prophecy is saying that there's going to be someone in the wilderness preparing the way for God. Because when the Jews were asking Jesus, who was John the Baptist? He gave him, this is what we call a precept. In Isaiah 28, 10, it says precept upon precept, line upon line, verse upon verse. This is how we use the scripture to interpret scripture. Prophecies point towards something. So when they said, who is John? John said, this is he of who it is written, the one who is in the wilderness. And it says, I'll repeat, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the way in the desert highway for our God. So it says this person in the wilderness is preparing the way for God. And if you read Mark 1.1, 1, 1, it confirms the same thing. All the four gospels actually say the same thing because they understood this prophecy was saying that the person in the wilderness who was John the Baptist is preparing the way for God. And if we go into the book of John 1, I think Sorry, it's who, who wrote this? 120. Who, who wrote this? And, and when? John, John let says, me, and when? Let, me, when this? let me just go into the book of John. Uh, I think it's when 1. When did John write this book? We're having a debate. I mean, the final, uh, this is what John's so word was. It says, John bore John witness about him and cried out. Why do you want to know? Because it's important. This is he Why? of when whom I said, he, he who comes after me ranks before me. Because yes. he was Fact before me, over time. but John was who older than Jesus, Jesus and he who said that he... Jesus came before yes. him. Okay. Why who would he say that? Jesus because he knew who Christ was and he knew who what his mission was. Because the older prophecies, and that's why when I started with Malachi 3 1, and this is going to be my last verse who that I close on, we heard you the first three says, times. Thank you. Yeah, and when Behold, I send my messenger, and he prepared the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord. But God is speaking, and it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. The Old Testament was very clear that God was coming to earth. This is why Jesus referred them to read this prophecy. So if anyone says Jesus didn't say he was God, Matthew 10, 11, 11, 10, sorry, because we have something called precept upon precept. Isaiah 28. 10 and the Old Testament clearly says God is coming to visit the earth that's why I can reference Isaiah 40 which Jesus spoke directly of and Malachi 3 1 and on that note Jesus confirmed he was God peace out thank you Hallelujah. right as the cameras are doing um, all right uh, Jesus did not confirm in many many places uh, in in the New Testament Jesus uh, says things which God would never say at the end of John's Gospel, he says, I'm returning to your father, my father, your God, and my God. Jesus says he has a God. And just to remember, in Judaism, they believed in one God, not two or three. But in case you think um, in heaven, Jesus has gone back to heaven, and now he really is God again, let's see what Paul has to say about who Jesus is after the ascension. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Jesus, sorry, Paul says this about Jesus. I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. Sounds pretty good and the husband is the head of his wife, and God is the head of Christ. So the head of Christ, the head of the Messiah, is God himself. And this is the ascended Jesus, not the, the Philippians chapter 2, Philippians who divests himself of his Godhead and becomes man. This is Jesus back into heaven, and still here he is called, he is said that God, that the Messiah has a God. Um, so, and Jesus denies he's God in Mark chapter uh, 10, as we've seen. Why do you call me good? No one is good. But also Jesus prays. He prays to God. Uh, he doesn't know things. God knows everything. God knows the date of the end. Jesus says in Matthew's gospel and Mark's gospel, no one knows the date of the end. Only the Father, neither the Son, but only the Father. So the Son doesn't know the date of the end, and by the implication of the Holy Spirit, no one else does but the Father. Who's all knowing that? Indeed. Uh, but so only, God, only God the Father is God in the Bible. Only God the Father is fully God in the Bible. That Jesus is a human being, a very exalted human being, but he certainly is not Yahweh. And the final piece of evidence is this, interesting piece of evidence. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Now prayer is really important in the Christian life. And you're, you're praying to who? To God. Who does Jesus say specifically you should pray to? If you look at the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. What does it look like? Um, Should I come out the way? Hang on, just, just give me 15 more seconds. So Jesus says when you pray, you're not praying to Jesus, you're not praying to the Holy Spirit, you're praying to the Father in heaven. So there's no Trinity here, there's no divine Jesus, there's no Holy Spirit. You pray to God in heaven, our Father in heaven. If, if Jesus was revealing a God of a Trinity, he would say, when you pray, pray to the Trinity or pray to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit or something like that. No, he says, when you pray, pray to your Father in heaven. He didn't say pray to me. And this to me is a clinching argument that spiritually we're to address God in heaven, our Father, and not Jesus. Jesus doesn't feature anywhere in the Lord's Prayer. He's absent. And that tells me he's not meant to be a focus of prayer. He's not meant to be a focus of worship or devotion. Only God is. And the only religion on earth today that I know that does that to perfection when it's practiced properly is Islam. I'm no kidding. It's the only religion in the world that knows of Jesus as the Messiah and gets him just about right. That he's a Messiah and a prophet of God. So my invitation is if you want to follow Jesus authentically today, you basically got to become a Muslim. So that's it. Where's that man? And go and break your path. I'm going, yes, I'm desperate to go and have something. Oh, thank you, Mr. Albanian. Very good. From Yaga Benavid! Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. Yep. Listen! Right, well, today I'm going to spot, or I was intending to talk primarily about China because I think it's become quite a big issue. I think it's beginning to stoke up, and I think, I mean, I've often spoken.